Before we go into the demo, I'd like to go through what we have in our environment. In the production site on the left, we have a set of SQL Server VMs on an ESX cluster connected to a Clarion CX4960 array. And on the right, we have their replicas using a recover point to replicate the data to the recovery site. So in this demonstration, we will show virtualized SQL servers being failed over to the remote site using vCenter, SRM and EMC recover point replication technology. Here we see the protected site array managers. This is where the EMC recover point appliances are configured. Each data store group contains the VMFS data stores configured for each VM. If we go ahead and configure protection group at the production site, each of the four protection groups will contain one VM. Protection groups identify what VMs are protected by SRM for failover and identifies the placeholder data store for failed over VMs. Here we can see the placeholder VM created at the recovery site and we continue to create the protection groups for the remaining VMs. using the data store groups associated with each VM. And choosing the location for the placeholder VM. We go to the individual virtual machines and we can configure protection for each virtual machine within the protection group. We'll configure the TPC EVMs as high priority for failover. We'll give the TPCH a priority of the own power on for demonstration purposes. Choosing the priority for TPCE as high. TPCE 1 VM will be powered on first as part of the recovery plan. So now we have the four protection groups created. Now we go ahead and we create a recovery plan at the recovery site. A recovery plan is an automated run book, an order set of steps that controls what happens during a failover. Name our recovery plan SQL VMs. In this example, the recovery plan will contain four protection groups. If I finish. Our recovery plan is created. We can see the recovery steps, the priorities of the virtual machines. So we can see from the recover point GUI what's going on before failover. We see that the SQL servers are under load.
we see the SQL Server TPCH2 under load. So now we go ahead and we run the recovery plan at the recovery site. So we can see the various steps that the recovery plan consists of and we notice the priority levels of the VMs. So the VMs at protection site are being powered down as part of the recovery plan. Rescanning all HPAs. TPC1 is now powered on. Recovery plan has completed. The two TPCE SQL servers are powered on and the TPCH SQL servers are on a powered off state. If we go to hosts and clusters. Go to our SQL VMs directory, we can see that the two TPCE VMs are powered on. We go ahead and log on to TPCE1 at the recovery site, now failed over. You can see that the TPCE database is online at the recovery site. We do the same for TPCE2. Again, we see the TPC database is online at the recovery site. we go ahead and power on the TBCH SQL servers. Logging on to TBCH1 server. And the TBCH database is now online at recovery site. Do the same for TPCH2. TPCH2 is also online at recovery site. If you want to view the recovery report, we can see that the total execution time was 10 minutes and 12 seconds. And we can see the steps carried out as part of the recovery plan. So now we can see the consistency groups and the new role of production source has been assigned to the recovery site. So the virtualized SQL servers have failed over successfully to the remote site using VMware, vCenter, SRM and EMC recovery point replication technology.